Now we are live. We continue our study of Pashas Vayigash. First Pasuk in Pashas Vayigash. Here we go. Okay. Vayigash Elov Yehuda Vayomer Vi Adoni Yedavu No Avdecho Dova Ba'ozne Adoni Ba'al Dicha Abcho Ba'avdecho Ki Chomoycho Ki Farai Okay, last year on this week's parasha, which is before Yom Div, a long time ago, we spoke about Vayigash, about this, the significance of the approach. Um, so we'll move on from there, and I want to just point out two things, and, and then we'll go to the overall um, plea of Yehuda. <clears throat> First thing is like this, what was Yehuda's request? It says, Yedaber no avdecho dovar. So his request is to speak. And to speak, to be medaber a davar. And this was after Yosef told the brothers, Alu Shalom. So he told them that um, they should go up Shalom. And his response is Yedaber davar. So this reminds us of the beginning of the of the saga of the uh, relationship of Yosef and his brothers, <clears throat> in the beginning of Pashas Vayeshev, mm -hmm. where Yosef was commanded by his father to find out Shloim Achecha Veshloim Hatsoin. Lech no re'e as Shloim Achecha Veshloim Hatsoin Vahashiveni Dovar. So he's supposed to seek their Shalom of his brothers and bring back a Dovar. And he didn't return, but as it says earlier in Pashvi, he said, Aviv Shamaras Haddavar. So Yosef is always looking for the Dovar. The Yosef story is about a Dovar that's supposed to come. And that Dovar is um, closely associated with Shalom. There in Parshat Vayeshev we have as well, V'lo yochlu dabrei l'shalom. So the dover that they, that was lacking is shalom. And we spoke about this throughout Parshat Vayeshev and that in the Nevi'im, the dover, the word, the word of all words, the word of Hashem that all words are um, dependent upon is shalom. And the Navi seeks the word shalom. In other words, what the Navi seeks is um the root word that would explain how we can have shalom between us and Hashem and us on this world and everything else, all other words depend on that. So that is the davar of the Navi, so of Nevu'ah. So when ya when Yosef seeks um, a davar, he's seeking shalom. And um, and the story of the loss of Nevu'ah, that uh, the story of Yosef and the brothers which revolves around Nevu'ah and its loss revolves around shalom. And here, he offers a, Yosef offers an ending to the story, which is Alul Shalom, everything's fine. And Yehuda counters with Yudaber Dover. Okay, so like I said, that takes, seems to take us back to the question of Shalom and Dover and what that means we'll, we'll get to soon. Okay, and then I want to also repeat, this is a new thing, this is this last point about Dover and Shalom is a new point, but I want to repeat also an old point, which is when he tells him ki chomoicho kefaroi, this follows on the end of last week's parasha in Pasuk, I'm sorry, the last parasha, Mikates, in Pasuk Tezvav, where Yosef says, ish asher komoini. Mm -hmm. Now, who's komoini? What do we know about this person? Well, we know that Pare said to him, ein novoin v'chochom komoicho. So, that's the komoini, komoicho. So, by... Um, by relying on Pare's praise or Pare's um, evaluation of him to as a reference for to his greatness, Yosef is um, sort of equating himself to Pare because he's trusting Pare. So Yehuda's Ki Chamoicha Kefare follows on the Kamaini, which takes us back to Pare's statement of Ein Navan Chacham Kamaicha, and it's sort of making him, it's saying, well, if Pare is your is is the one who's vouching for you then that makes you in his camp okay so those are the two points i want to make on pasuk Aleph. and now we're going to go on and what i'm going to do today is let's talk generally about yehuda's argument and in the coming shroom perhaps we'll get to some pratim 
But um, what's his main argument, essentially? The main argument comes at the end. That if Binyamin stays behind, it's going to be too much for Yaakov to bear. And I underwrote a guarantee to safety, and I can't see the evil, right? The background, the whole introduction seems to be somewhat superfluous. What's it doing, Michal? No, I asked that question as well. Why does he start? What's he going back to Adoni Sha'al? What's this whole background? What's the purpose of all this? Okay, so let's read Pasuk Yotas inside and point out something on that. And like I said, we'll talk about this more generally and then we'll get into the... We'll read all the Pasuk inside of the coming show. So let's look at Pasuk Yotas. Adoni Sha'al, here's the Dover. Right? He asked permission to spay a Dover. And what is the Dover? It starts with... Adoni Sha'al es avadov lemar hayesh lechem of oyoch. My master, important word in this soliloquy, it occurs seven times, as often significant words do occur in that number. So Adoni occurs seven times in this in Yehuda's speech. And um, he says, My master asked his servants, saying, Do you have a father or a brother? And we responded by saying, Yeshon of Zakhonim Eladinu, Yeshon of Zakhonim Eladinu, etc. Now, this didn't happen. This never happened. If you look back at the story in Parak Membe's Pasuk test, he accused them of being Miraglim. And they said, no, we're not. And he says, yes, you are. And he says, no, there's 12 of us, son of one man, and the little ones with our father. So they offered the information of having a father and a brother. And he didn't ask them. Now, the idea that he asked them appears in Parakamem Gimel, Pasuk Vav, and Zayin. There, Yaakov complains, Why do you tell him? What do you have to do that for? They said, they said oh, he asked us. <laughs> So they excused themselves to their father for the fact that they divulged this sensitive information or this information that could be used against them, that they have a father or a brother, um, by saying, by saying they have a brother, I'm sorry, by saying that he asked us, that he asked us about the family. But he didn't. So the year the Ramban says, and as we learned when we learned those psukim, they didn't tell him the whole story. They didn't tell him that they were accused of being Muraglim. They didn't tell him the whole background. They made it, they made it much rosier than it seems. And the Rabban says they told him this. They told him he asked them as, a, uh, uh, as an excuse to their father. But it wasn't true. So why are they, how can they tell them? How can they tell the Isis? So, so exactly. So this, there's basically there's a narrative that has occurred. That's, okay, Parak Membez. That's our most reliable source for what happened. And then there's a retelling of the narrative twice, one to their father, and then again, Yehuda is saying it to Yosef. So Mela, when they're telling it to their father, okay, so they changed it because of Nidakeshalim. And they can't get upset. Um, but how is he going and telling Yosef an untruth? And going back to the other problem, What's the whole purpose of this of this introduction? And if the purpose of the introduction which is, as some people say, that they're coming to say, look, you know, we didn't even really want to bring our brother. We weren't even going to tell you that he exists. That's how sensitive it is. But you asked us, so we told you, but you should know this brother is really very dear to his father, which is very weak because the fact that the brother is dear to his father, you have to support that by saying we didn't even want to tell you we only told you because you asked it's a little funny a little extraneous information but also that only works if he actually asked them but if he didn't ask them and they offered it then on the contrary it indicates that they're not hiding it um or or they told him because they had to tell him because they accused him of being wrong what yes. right which notably is also absent from this story right this story goes like this hey, you want to know if we have a brother. And let's look at another thing that didn't happen. You said in Pasuk HaFal, if you said, do a live Asima Eni Alav. That also didn't happen. But Sima Eni Alav means at least. Well, soon see, it means more than that. It means I want to look at him. It doesn't just mean that, okay, you claim you have a brother. Prove it. Prove it. 
get me a DNA test or whatever. It's, it's, I want to, I want to see him. And not only that, Asima Eni Olov means not just I want to, I want to know that he's there. In other words, it's two things. It's not, A, it's not proof. It's Stafka, the experience of seeing. It's not just I want to know that he exists. But, okay, that maybe. But actually, Vasima Eni Olov does not mean to see something. It means to pay attention to something. Ad Kedekach, which I'll show you some sukkum. Ad Kedekach, that there are those that say, I think Rashi quotes this, but it's in the Medrash, that this is a taina. You said Vasima Eni Olov, which means you're going to, 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 no, you're going to take care of him. Mm -hmm. And now you're going and you're putting him in jail? Mm -hmm. So, because look at the Pasuk in Yemir Perik Lamed Tess. Pasuk in Bez, and I'll show you that there you see that Sim uh, Ayin means to attend to. Yemir Perik Lamed Tess, Pasuk Yud Bez. This is Nebuchadnezzar told Nebuchadnezzar that you should take Yermiyahu, Kachenu, the Enecha Sim Olov, Valtas Loim Umaro. Okay, pay attention to him, attend to him, and don't let anything evil happen to him. Don't do it. Ki kashi yadabe lecha kira se imoy. So simas ayin means to protect him. Don't do it well. Like al tas umara and whatever you ask for. Yeah, no, but I'm saying that follows on the on the enecha simolov. Don't let him out of your sight. Make sure to take care of him. And and furthermore, we have that in parak mem. Um, I think it's here. It's even more clear. In Perek Mem Pasuk Dalid in Yemia, where he offers, and it was around, and offers Yemia to come with him to Bavel. If you're and then you could choose where you want to go. Okay, that's the Pasuk in Perek Mem. So. Which is just to keep that in mind because we might get back to that point. He tells him, if you want to come with me, to, if it's toiv be'enecha, see, there's a lot about Einayim here, right? Because if it's toiv be'enecha to come with me to bubble, then asim es eni alecha. If it's ra be'enecha, then pick whichever other place is toiv be'enecha. Just remember that. Okay, we might get back to that point. But it indicates then that simas ayin is a toiv. And the Ramban makes this point. And that's why Yehuda's telling Yosef, um, you wanted to. To care for him. Okay? Now, the truth is there is an instance in Tanakh of Simas Ayin Lera. And that's something we spoke about in the previous year and we mentioned it, I think, at the end of Mid-Gates, but in the previous year we spoke about this at length, which is in Omois, Perak Tess, Pasuk Dalid. There it talks about if the Bnei Yisrael will be in, when they will be Beshevi. Um, Tess Dalad and Amos, Hashem will send the sword after them. Vesamti aini alehem lera'a v'loyle tayva. Vesamti aini alehem lera'a v'loyle tayva. So there is a simas ayin lera'a as well. Okay. Now we spoke about this the previous year that in the, in the story of Yosef, the differentiation between tayva and ra becomes blurred. He says to them, "Lo mishlam dem ra'a tachas tayva." For stealing the Gavia, but really he's the one who instigated the Ra of Yiro to Dibara, as we discussed at length, and, and the reference to Omois and Toiv and Ra, the whole Sukya. Um, okay, so it's no surprise then that the Simas Ayin, this expression of Simas Ayin in Yehuda's speech, actually appears in the Nevi'im, the Toiv, when people are going to the land of their enemies, such as Yemi is, and such as the brothers are now, and you, Binyamin, who's being captured but with the Shevi and we also have an Amos as Simas Aini Alehem Lira of Elayla Taiva. So here Yehuda is using this language which is ambiguous. It could mean Ra and it could mean Taiv. The implication in Amos is that Lira of because it's usually Taiv. Ah, exactly. So the Ramban says that Simas Ayin is a Taiv. So <laughs> the, the answer is exactly as you said. That in Amos it makes the point that it's going to be Lira of Elayla Taiv. Which means that the default of Simas Ayin is Latayv. Okay, so that's what something we're, we're going to explain that as well. Why is it that the default of Simas Ayin is Latayv, but nonetheless, it can be used Lira of Latayv? So then, 
then it doesn't mean Taiva necessarily. What, what exactly is that dynamic? No, if you say it without expl- explicating, then, then we Fine, but then use a different word. No, but saying to use a different term. Like, why using a term that has a positive connotation inherently, so there's Sima Sayin, and then tw- turning it Latayva? Right, no, the, the answer is, the answer is, if we look at the, the answer is, the point that Pasuk is that normally you care for something that you want to do good to. And Hashem is saying that, you you know, you don't think I forgot about you, I'm going to care for you. But the raw, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm going to give you attention. Mm-hmm. And um, even though you think I forgot about you, no, I didn't forget about you because, right, all right. But we'll explain that more. Okay, now, but in the default, Vasimus Ayin is a type. Yehuda is telling Yosef that um, he said, I want to um, see Binyamin and um, attend to him, let's say. Maybe that's the right word. Okay. Which. Never happened. He didn't say that. He said, we need him to be proof. And you're not spies. So those are two things that I noticed. Maybe there's more, but there's are two things that are um, fictitious. The rest, I think, seems pretty much to track the way it's described earlier. But we'll see as we go on. Okay, so here's the key, which will explain everything. The climax of Pashas Mikates is Sholem. Sholem. Alula Sholem, which as we said, that's what Yosef is, is looking for. That's what Yosef, that's the Dover that Yosef has to find. He's, he's tasked. His mission is to achieve Sholem for this family. Okay. And that's the Dover that he needs to find. Says Yehuda to him, Yedabeno Dover. Which means like this. Which means... You're offering shalom. You're you're claiming shalom. If so, I need to speak. Meaning to say like this. Meaning, as we said, shalom is the key word. The key word that anchors all other words. It's a key I, notion that that notion is supposed to make everything else fall into place, which is why it's the word of the Nevi'im. Here it's in Yosef's mouth. So Yosef is offering this master word. And Yehuda is telling him, you have to allow me to provide the dvarim that that uh, or the davar that is uh, woven around shalom. Ki chamoicha kefaroi, as we said, takes us back to um, to enav and mechacham kamoicha to to Yosef being in Paroi's camp, which brings us back to shloim Paroi. You are your shalom, says Yehuda to Yosef is not the Shalom of Yisrael. Yosef is tasked with the Shalom of Yisrael. And as we spoke at length about the Mizma Kuf Mem Zayin, where he talks about Asam Gevulech Shalom, Chedav Chitim Hasbiech, and there it's Nidche Yisrael Lechanes. So um, Yisrael is supposed to get Shalom. Misham Chiyu Shalayim, it's Hashem. And Yosef subverted that and brought that Shalom to Pari. So, and here he's offering, at the end of the Parashat Mik, he's offering Shalom Stam. And Yehuda says, listen, if you want to talk Shalom Stam, then I have to correct the narrative, correct the story, correct the words that are depend on Shalom. Okay? So far, so good as an, in an abstraction? Just in an abstract sense. In an abstract sense, just forget about the I'm not answering the question yet of how did he make things up. I'm saying that the reason why the Dover follows upon Shalom is because Yosef here offered a word, the key word around which all words are woven. But he does not know how to use that word properly, as been evidenced from the beginning of Parashas Mikates, where he misapplies that word and he, he brings it to Paris court. And so, therefore, I'm connecting. Yehuda is saying, look, if you want someone to talk Divrei Shalom, I have to do it. You can't do it. And here's and then he's going to tell him, here's where you went wrong. And obviously, the end of that is, you're telling me, Alula Shalom Alavichem, but that's an oxymoron because pen aberrashing so it's obvious right so it's not just that it's not just that he's saying you know i'm worried about it he's correcting y- yosef is making a statement at the end of the parasha which doesn't make sense mm-hmm. because there's no shloim Yisro, there's no shalom al Yisro, there's no shloim avichem mm-hmm. because pen aberrashing so it's obvious but we'll get to that soon but the point is that the dover follows from shalom because yosef is using a word that it's not just a word that you could throw around it's a word that much else revolves around and Yehuda is telling him look there's a lot more to talk about once you're saying that we're dropping that word Shalom you can't do it I can't okay now so I want to explain to you what that means 
Um, when he, Yehud, Yosef says Sholem, when Yosef says Alul Sholem, right? Let's see. When did, let's go like this. When did Sholem a f- figure in the story of Yosef and the brothers? First, he charged him with being Miraglim, right? But there was a point in the story where he was very um, concerned with their Sholem. And that is in Perak Mem Gimel Pasik Chavzayin and on. Once they ate together, and once they brought him the mincha, then you have a pasuk of Ches Chavzayin. Sorry, Perak Mem Gimel Pasik Chavzayin. Vayish Alahem leSholim, Vayomer Hasholim Avichem Azokin, and they said Sholim, and then he sees Binyamin. So this false narrative, this fictitious narrative of you asked about our father and brothers, which follows upon Yosef offering Sholem, it has some truth. Because there was a point in the story where he took great interest in the Sholem of their father and of their little brother, right? And Vayisa Ein of Vayar, the Aaron Pasuk of Tess, connects to this Asima Eini Olav. So if you want to show, you know, where did something like this happen? Is there any point in the story where something like this happened? The answer is yes. Because he didn't ask them, he didn't initiate the request, do you have a father or brother? But at some point in the story, he started taking great interest in them. He didn't just say, oh, that's your brother, okay, you're not spies. No, no, no. He said, right? So if we, if we take a certain point in the narrative and sort of um, retro, take it backwards and try to rewrite the past in light of that point in the narrative, that would be the point. That would be the point that would allow for this kind of backstory that you cared about our father and brother Adonis Shalas Avod of Lema, right? Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not, I'm not up to the answer. I'm just pointing out there's a point in the narrative where things become very conciliatory and friendly when they're eating together and that's when Yosef cares about the Sholem of the father and uh, he wants and he cares very much for the brother. He's In fact, he puts his eyes on him and is moved by he, by seeing him. And he says, Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we ever made this connection, Yichuneka and Yosem Lecha Sholem, so Yisa Hashem, so Vayisa um, Einav and and, Yisa, and um, Asima Eini Olav, and the connection between Sima and Sholem. Okay, there's all these Lashem, it's fine. Good. When did he, so when did he offer them Sholem when they ate together? As we mentioned then, that's when we have Nitche Yisrael Lechanes. Finally, Yosef and all the brothers are together. Since the beginning of Ayeshev, of, of Miketz, they have not been together. Since the beginning of Ayesha, I'm sorry. Here they're finally all together. All 12 brothers are back together. And now everything is great. This is like Nidchei Yisrael Lechanes. And he offers them Sholem. They eat together. And that's like um, um, some Givulech Sholem. The Sholem goes to your boundaries, not to the enemy power. Chilev Chitim Yas Bi'ech. And not, um, not, what's it called? By Achilleum Echel of Chita, which is Yosef giving the, the, the Chita to, to Paray. Mm-hmm. Now we finally get to the Sholem of Yisrael, and instead of Lo Yochlu Dabra the Sholem, they respond and say, Sholem Lavdu Chavinu. So basically, go, the way to say it is that in Perak Mem Gimel, Pasuk of Ches, where they say Sholem, that's the resolution of Lo Yochlu Dabra the Sholem, the beginning of Parshish Vayeshev, and this is when they're all united. Okay, so great. Yeah. Yeah. But he's also not with them either. Yeah, I remember what happened. We have to figure out what broke down. Okay, I don't remember how we did that. No, I didn't remember we had a group shot there. I don't remember right now. But also, also something went wrong, right? Because um, he plants the Gavia. So this this is a short-lived Shalom. I think it's when they... Um, they were surprised when he. I don't remember what happened. I forgot. I have to go back and look at the notes. Okay, I'll go point There's a point in the story where everything is great and they're all united again, right? And I want to say like this: Yosef, by referencing Shalom in the end of the parsha of Miketz, he's basically saying that, as far as he's concerned, that's the story. The story starts there. Okay, that's what Yosef is saying. Yosef is saying like this: I was antagonistic to you up to a point, and then. We achieved shalom, and that brings us back to Parakim Gimel Pasuk Chavav. When I came to you and you prepared the mincha, and we ate together. Those are good times. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, that's where we stand. The Miraglim background is, is erased from history. I'm, I'm, I'm dismissing that. But this, but our relationship starts from there, and he stole the gavia, and uh, and you know he's got to pay for it. I still want shalom. I still want shalom Yisrael and shalom Alavichem. 
Um, I'm, I'm still considering our relationship as if it began with that time where we spoke with Shalom. Okay? Because he's looking for Shalom. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. So, that's not Shalom. Now, Yehuda tells him like this. So, Yehuda tells him like this. Fine. You know what? Mask him. So, let's... So, what Yehuda is saying like this. Yosef is saying like this. You know, lots of things happen that shouldn't have happened because really, I'm a Shalom guy. And that's really what I'm looking for. As we said, that's the duffer. That's the word. That's the truth. Things that are not consistent with Shalom shouldn't happen. If they happen, they have to be rectified. So, I'm, I want to rectify it right now. What I'm looking for is Shalom. That's what I stand for as much as you stand for it. Yehuda says... You don't stand for it the same way I do because you're a power guy and you have Shalom Power. I'll tell you what Shalom Al Yisrael really looks like. Okay. But as part of that, Yehuda tells him like this Okay, let's rewrite the past. <laughs> Why are we writing the past? Because if you're saying that you want to approach this from the perspective of Shalom, so from the perspective of Shalom, it's as if. Oh, sorry. But yeah, let's get to the story again because you're starting the story. You're you're starting the story from halfway through. Okay, so what happened before that? In other words, let's pretend, which is what you just said, that let's pretend that we met each other and we had a great meal and we're real buddies. So then someone says, "Well, oh, how? how why'd you meet? How'd you meet? Oh, because you know I met them before and I said I'd love to meet your brother. I'd want to see him. Yeah. So that's the background to this to this to the Shalom story, right? That's it. So you dab in a davar. Now, we still have to figure out why is that important to his ultimate argument. But the reason why there are things here that didn't happen is because you know why? Because the same reason they told Yaakov something that didn't happen. Why did they tell Yaakov something that didn't happen? Because Mishalim, Mepnei Dakei Shalom. Because in order to have Shalom al Yisrael, Shalom avichem, they're allowed to lie. So similarly, Yosef is saying, I like that Shalom avichem, Mahalach. I'm, I'm also committed to Shalom avichem, which ultimately is Shalom of Yisrael. And so Yehud is saying, okay, we should know if you're committed to Shalom Avichem, then let me tell you what the story would be. And therefore, for all intents and purposes, we're going to pretend it is because you're even allowed to lie to Dagi Shalom so we can make up a story. This is a story we have to make up if you're committed to Shalom. And then in the context of this story, let's work ahead and we'll see how something's going wrong. So again, I didn't explain why it's important to Vasimei and Yalav, but, but it's something like that. In other words, even if you just say like this, for example, just maybe a placeholder for now. Some people say, like the Ramban, Vasima any Allah. So the Ramban says, okay, very nice, but he stole a Gavia. Like, you know, what do you mean Vasima? So he says, no, because if you said that, once you said that, you shouldn't, you should uphold Vasima any Allah. Okay? Even though he stole a Gavia, it's still a bazillion for you. So it's a remarkable thing. Yosef never said it, but Yehuda's telling was like this if you're committed to a Shalom kind of experience, then it's Ki'ilu. <laughs> it's Ki'ilu. The reason why we're here is because you took a great interest. In, uh, in, um, in 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 Binyamin, uh, fraternal kind of interest, like you, you cared about this young child. In which case, it's wrong for you to to, to jail him, okay, or whatever. However, you read that, but the point. Father, 10, okay. Yeah, okay, right. But um, still, like called him Bini. He called him Bini, right? He called him Bini. He called him Bini, so you could say that well, he's, he's fond of him. Shalom is not, it's not absence of war. It's actually it's actually an invest an investment. Right, and therefore what? An investment in and therefore you have to build around it. Is yeah, that what you saying? And then, and then you have to, you have to overlook certain things. Too. Right, exactly. And and you have to approach things in a certain way. And you and, and and if that involves thinking about the past in a different way, then that's what you do. That's the idea of Mishalom Dadaka Shalom. It's like here we'll tell a story necessary for Shalom. And I think, like I said before, I alluded to this. I think what that means is also because if things happen in the past that are not consistent with Shalom, they have to be rectified. And they at least have to be recognized as things that shouldn't have happened. So basically, when Yosef is committed to Shalom, he's saying, look, the whole Moragan thing, I'm willing to acknowledge that, you know, maybe we all made mistakes and we could all move on. So you and that, that way we'll achieve Shalom. So Yehud is saying, okay, so that, let's erase it and let's give a background. If anyone asks how, why we're here, the answer is, that's the answer. This is how we're going to talk about it. This is how we're going to relate to it. Um, so again, just to repeat, I'm not saying how that's necessary for the Yehuda's argument, but I'm saying it, 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 it's a major part of it because Yehuda is, is now stepping up, not just stop making an argument, he's stepping up to the offer of Shalom that, you, that Yosef put forward and he's giving you the Dover that has to um, contribute to that. Okay, so let's go back to the Vasima Eni Olaf, okay? Um, Vasima Eni Olaf naturally means good, but sometimes it can mean evil. Why is that? So I think very simple, and this takes us back to the Pasuk in Yirmiya. If someone is a good eye, a toiv ayin, 
Asime ain't yolov. All right. Well, why is it default for taif? Because we're default to taif. If ayin taiva, it's very important that you look at things for taif, right? So therefore, if you have an ayin taiva, vasime ain't yolov is a taif. Kamash v'lan amos that. No, it's going to be raw instead of taif, even though it should normally be taif. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. But that takes us back to the Pasuk Kedibri. Remember, I was pointing out, it says, Im taif be'enecha lava iti bavel, then v'asim es'enei alecha. Because if it's good for you to come to bavel, if you approve of the galos to bavel, then me and who's aradin, who's leading the galos to bavel, is a taif ayin, because I'm doing what you consider to be taif. And then v'asim es'enei alecha, which is obviously going to be taif. If it's Rabbi Einecha, then go to Toiv Yobbe Einecha, meaning if, if, if Golos Babel is Rabbi Einecha, so you don't want me to be some Ayin Alecha. Like it says in Omer, he said, sometimes you go to Shevi and it's going to be Vasimi Ane and Ayin Alem Le Ravala Toiv. There's two types of Golos. In Yemir, Yemir is very insistent to the fact that Hashem is Machshavis Toiv of Eloi Lera to the people in Babel. That means that, the, as we discussed in the context of, of, of Mitzrayim at length, that um, things could look like they're bad, but really Hashem has a plan on the type. So then you say, look, it's... Right, and that's the whole thing. Yosef is saying, you think it's raw, it's really taiva. So this whole question of... And that's, that takes us back to the Simas Ayin, which could be taiva ra in this context of Yehudah to be known. Why? Because in there's two types of Golas. There's a Golas described in Bava, in Yemir, which is like, okay, it looks bad, but really Hashem is thinking good, which is exactly Yosef's argument here. Mm-hmm. And then you have, like, the and says to Yemir, if this is taiva be'inecha... Golos Bavel, then Asima Eini Alecha, and you trust me as being a Toivayin because I'm the one who's executing the Golos Bavel, which you consider to be Toiv. If this is not, if this is Rabbi Einecha, then go to someplace else that's Toiv Einecha. The other model of Golos is described in Amos, where it says, and in all the parallels there are with the Kates, the Klovkites, etc., etc. We keep on going back to that. Um, and there it says, you know what? Hashem is going to be some ayin le ro'av the type. Even though Hashem's ayin is the ayin type, so you would think, how could that be? No, it's going to be the ro'av the type. Why? Because what happens in Amos in Perak Ches, in the previous Perak, is the end of Nevuah, which is, um, the metaphor for that is the sun setting, v'atzaharayim, v'achashachti lo'etz b'yoyim or. Okay? So le- the loss of sight. And further in that parak is the Rav L'shmoya Dvar Hashem. So the sun setting Bat Saharaim and the Rav L'shmoya Dvar Hashem, it's not a Rav L'lechem. The Rav of Mitzrayim, as we discussed, indicates this Rav that the Dvar Hashem is gone. The Lechem is a marshal for the Dvar Hashem. The sun setting, we spoke about this also by Rikos, about the Shvatim losing the Nevuah. And there the Pasuk says the sun set Bat Saharaim. The brothers met Yosef and they ate with him Batsoharayim. Because when they met with Yosef, there's the possibility of Nevur returning, because they're really united. There's a possibility of Shalom, which is the Dover of the Nevi'im, being attained once again. Okay, so that's the Tsaharayim. But in, in Yamas, where it says, no, the sun will set Batsoharayim and there'll be a Ravlish Mohad Vashem. So all of a sudden, the Ayin of Hashem which is the Ayin through which we see and through which the Nevi'im see, is not going to be the type, it's going to be the Ra. So in other words, the default of Ayin is Toiv. Why? Because Ayin, of course, sees Toiv. In Micha, in, in Amis, I'm sorry, which is talking about the, the inability to, to speak and, and see the Devar and see as Hashem does, that in that context, the Ayin of Hashem turns, turns into Rav Lael Toiv. Because, because the Ayin, the Asima Ayin, the Asima Ayin turns into Rav, not Toiv, because whether... Um, because because the reason why the ayin is by default type is because the seamus ayin is type is because the ayin is default type. But when there's a kilkul in the in the ability to see, as is described in Perikhes, and you know the whole question of um Omis over there saw the Klovkites, he saw correctly, but taking us back to the brothers who didn't see correctly, right? So in A and Bayeru, they saw the Kates, but they didn't understand Baha Kates, they didn't understand that as a Kovkayet. So they lost the ability to see properly, and that's Marshall is that the sun is setting Bat Saharaim. Similarly, Hashem's Ayin will be some Lira of Loyotev. So now back to our Parsha. So Yehuda says like this Yehuda says, Look, you said Vasima in Yalov in this fictitious Shalom narrative, right? Um, what does that mean, Vasima in Yalov? 
Of course, you meant it l'tayv. You didn't mean it l'ra. However, pen erabara. Pen erabara. The way you're offering it, the shalom that you're offering, does not involve a simas eye in the taif. Because I'm going to be raya ra. Right, so it's not shalom. And it doesn't stick with the asimah either. So asimah eni is, in fact, is deliberately an ambiguous lashon, which defaults to taif because no one, no good person says asimah eni and means lara unless he dafka drays it lara, as you correctly said. But the default is l'tayv. But it could be interpreted l'ra. And since I will be raya ra, so therefore you're, you're forcing us into a position where the simas ayin turns into ra. And that's not shalom. That's not shalom avichem. Okay? Um, that's not shalom avichem. So in other words, another way to say it is, they had that meal, and they had shalom, and they had that meal about saharayim, and that meal allowed... The, that meal suggested the possibility that who was going to return. The Riyah of the Taif. And Yud is saying, and, the, and that Yosef is referencing that meal by bringing back Shalom because that's when they had Shalom. And Yud is saying, look, you're, you're making it that I can't see the Taif. Because I'm going to be Raya Ra. What? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we're looking for the Dvar Hashem. Right, right. So, um, like it says in Amis, right? The Rav is the Dvar Hashem. They're going to seek the Dvar Hashem below Yim Tzau. Right? So the same thing over here. He says, look, you're looking for Sholem, which is the Dover, but you're not going to find it because Pen Ere Barasha Yim Tzau Instead of the Dvar Hashem that you're offering, which is Sholem, is the Dvar Hashem, actually is going to be Ra. That's Mait Tzau Avi. And so we're not going to find this Sholem. So no, Mimele is correcting him. What? And the Rav won't come back. Nivu won't come back, Shalom can come back, right? Like the Pasuk says, Shalom Ad Yisrael in, in Tehillim, which has a lot to do with this, and the Pasuk we spoke about in Kofim Zayin, um, the Shalom is supposed to be for Yisrael, for Gvuleich, not Shalom Parei, Komoicha Kafari, therefore you need me to correct this and tell you the only way we would have Shalom. So basically, the point is that just like the Mishana to their father, to, to um, the Mishana when they lied to Yaakov, and they had Shalom, so the same Shalom Avichem, that same exact concern. So, the, which is the point I started with, that there's the narrative as described in the Torah, then there's twice been repeated, and both times it's repeated as in, in, in a way that didn't happen. It's both for the same reason. Shlom Avichem. You just say you want to talk Shlom Avichem, then this is the story. And if this is the story, then something doesn't yeah, add up. Different. Exactly. An, an Asa, and he gives him an out. This uh, is the way out. Still be shalom, even if not pure, shalom, not complete shalom. I don't know. Right, it's interesting. We're about to get that. Well, why? Because they wouldn't be united. Right. I don't know. Would it be Shloim Avichem? Right, it's interesting. I think we spoke about this. Was it Yehuda didn't want to see it, or it's that, uh, or will he have Shalom? Okay, that's a very interesting point you're making, which is that even Yehuda, that even Yehuda's argument is not giving a path towards Shalom. Because he doesn't end off in saying, that way my father will be Bishalom. He just oh. says, I don't want to see it. Right. So this is something to do with, I have to go back to the notes from the last year, which is, by the way, very good I listened to, about Vayigash of Yehuda, that uh, Yehuda is basically teasing out evil from, from Taiv. And like this whole business of the Taiv and Raz mixed together, Yehuda is not willing to accept that anymore. And he says, I don't want to see the raw. So that might have to do with this also, that even if he's not giving a path towards Shalom, he's, he's facing whatever raw he can face. <laughs> And saying, I don't want to have to do with it. In other words, your shalom is bad some flawed because it's some rat. It might be like that. Your shalom is flawed, and therefore, I want to have nothing to do with it. That might be the punchline. Okay, but this is we have to figure that out. Okay. Good. So I noticed some sukkim that are, but you, you got most of them.